head. So we're starting off with geometry. So that's polygons and angles within polygons, I believe. Yeah, so angles, lines and polygons, 2D shapes, area and perimeter, and 3D shapes for the human surface area. So this is quite, quite a hefty topic. I think it will take us up almost to lunch. And then we've got slightly different stuff after lunch. Um, so a couple of learning objectives. So to recall a variety of angles and facts and be able to use them in questions, to know the definition of parallel lines and recall the variety of angles related to them. We need to know the triangle types. Uh, so there's isosceles, scaling, equilateral, there's different quadrilateral types. Uh, we know squares, rectangles, there's more complicated ones, trapezium and a rhombus, for example, polygon types, so hexagon, septagon, octagon, they're all regular polygons. Uh, I don't think we generally have special names for irregular polygons. We would just say it's an irregular hexagon. So irregular meaning the angles or the internal angles are not the same. The regular, I think, generally tends to mean angles within uh, will be the same or at least have a set definition. Um, and recall the variety of angles back. Uh, understand how to find lines of symmetry, so I mentioned that before, and rotational symmetry in polygons, which you may not have come across before, but I'll go into in a good amount of detail. Hopefully this slider works. I've added it in. It should work. There we go. Um, ignore the five before. The five was just me testing it before. No one has answered five as of yet, at least. Um, so yeah, so I'm hoping everyone will just kind of give me an idea where they're at with this topic. Um, I understand your um, get ahead material, so we're not expecting you to be maybe three, four or five, but just answer honestly whether that is one or two or you're in the three, four or fives. But yeah, I'm hoping to get a few answers in this. OK, so we've got, <coughs> excuse me, so we've got quite a few fives, um, excluding mine. So my, mine will be in there somewhere, that was just a test one. Uh, some four, so we've got a nice mixture actually, but we've got 20, got verging on 25 people answering, which is really good. That's that's kind of the numbers I was hoping for. Okay, so I'll give it maybe another minute just to get an idea. So th this will help me understand how to pace it. So there's some people in one, which is absolutely fine, which is understandable because this is all going to be new to you. So I'll make sure that I'm going slow enough to kind of help you with a bit stuck, but I won't leave anyone uh, sitting there twiddling their thumbs. OK, so I'll give it just another 30 seconds if that just for any struggling answers to come through. OK, so I'll probably leave it there. So um, it's interesting. So that, that's over 50, almost 55 percent uh, as four and three. So, uh, sorry, five and four. I generally look at five and four, kind of group them together as moderately too confident. Um, so then that leaves about another 50%, one, two, three, especially quite a few in one. Okay, so I'm just going to move on there. Um, so I think you can carry on answering, but I, I won't see any more of it. But I think I've got a good idea based on that. So I'm going to move on. So I'm going to explain some angle types. So here we have, I'd say, the three most basic angles. We have a, a 90 degree or right angle. Uh, we have 360 degrees, which is a full revolution of a circle, as we can see. 
and we have uh, 180 degrees, which is what we often call an angle on a straight line. So these will all be really important for polygons. They'll be important for angle rules. Uh, so later on, I'll kind of show you how to compare angles. So there's certain scenarios that we can um, we can notice in questions where they'll test us, and we will notice certain rules based on these 90, 360, or 180 degrees. They call it full turn, half turn, and quarter turn. So now we're going to continue. So I'm wondering if people may have heard these terms before. So we can see an angle that lies between zero and 90 degrees is called something specific. An angle that lies between 90 degrees and 180 degrees is called something specific. There's a specific name for it at least. Um, and an angle between 180 and 360 degrees also has a specific name. So I'm just going to, um, this is not tested. I haven't put a slider in because I understand not everyone will have done it. So I want you to spend 30 seconds thinking about these the uh if you can think of a name for them and then i'll, I'll give you the answer and maybe you can compare So maybe you'll have heard of acute angles, obtuse angles and reflex angles. And as we can see, this is going to cover the full spectrum of angles. So every single angle that lies between uh, zero degrees and 360 degrees can be explained by an acute, obtuse or reflex angle. And as we saw, a reflex angle that goes up to 360 degrees is the full turn. So bigger than 360 degrees, it starts to overlap with 90 degrees again. For example, if you turn around 400 degrees, you've gone 360, so you've gone back to where you started, and then you've gone an, another 40. So we would just consider an acute angle. We're only interested in zero to 360 degrees. Okay, so now we have an exam question. So um, the exam question has been put in here. Um, I'm not 100% sure if everyone would have covered uh, one or two rules that we need here, but um, the rules make it easier. But I think based on what we've just learned, you have all the information you need based on angle rules. Um, and what we do is we use those angle rules to derive some, uh, basically to work out some important uh, formulas. And the formula but the formulas are based on the angle rules we've just used, so you don't necessarily need to know them. So I'll give you some time uh, to work this out. This is an exam question, not a worked example. So for any exam questions, I'll give you some time. If you're not familiar with that, then worked examples, I'll just give you time to read and absorb the question, but maybe not time to do it. And I'll just go through the work solution as you try it yourself. So we've got a good amount of time this session. Um, so yeah, I'll give you a couple of minutes if that to do this question. So I'll just read it out for everyone as well. So the interior angle of a regular pentagon is 108 degrees. Work out the sum of the five reflex angles at the vertices of a non-regular pentagon. So some people will know what to do straight away. So I'll give you some time to get on with it. Then maybe in 30 seconds to a minute, I'll give you some hints if you're kind of getting there, but struggling along the way. And then I'll go through it in full. OK, so I'll start to very slightly go through uh, some important points in the question. So the interior angle, so they've marked it for us. Interior just means within within the shape, as I'm sure you know. 
as 108 degrees work out the sum of the five reflex angles. So they've been kind enough to mark the reflex angles and they are just the exterior angles at the vertices. So you have interior angles within the shape and exterior angles outside the shape. I think a bit later on, I'll, I'll show you a relationship between these two. So a rule that's true for any, any shape. Um, so they want the sum of these five angles given here. OK, um, so. What should we do? So what we could say is um, we can see if we add 108 to 306 uh, to the exterior angle, uh, we've kind of talked about this before, or at least uh, hinted at it, that they should both add to 360 degrees because that would be a full turn. So 108, I'm going to maybe call this X just because I like using algebra. So 108 plus X is equal to 360 degrees. So X is equal to uh, 252 degrees. And they want the sum of that. So 5X is the sum which is equal to 1 to 60 degrees. Uh, there's also other ways to do it, but this is definitely the simplest way. Um, so you should all be able to see that if you can, brilliant. Um, so what I'm going to do, uh, if I didn't mention already, I'm not going to wait necessarily for questions just because it's not always the best use of our time. So as I'm going through, please ask your questions or as I'm finishing up, if you have a question, Right at the end, I'll move on. But as soon as a question comes in, I'm happy to just slightly jump back and answer the question, then go back to the question we were just working on. Because it doesn't make sense to sit around and, and wait for questions. So uh, that's the sum of them. I won't go through any other way, but soon you'll learn some other things, uh, some other rules that, that could have meant you could do this a different way. Um, so. OK, so now it's part B. Omar asks Harry, how many lines of symmetry does a pentagon have? Harry assumes it's a regular pentagon and his answer is five. They want us to draw the lines of symmetry on this regular pentagon. So obviously you don't have this in front of you, but it should take 10 seconds to do this sketch of the regular pentagon. Then please just draw in um, your lines of symmetry and we can, I think we can assume Harry's correct and try five or if you disagree, do any more or less. So don't worry if you're not quite sure. Um, so far, it comes up a bit later, but so far I haven't explicitly told you how to work out lines of symmetry. Um, the reason this question is here is to test your understanding before I tell you things. So if I tell you something, it might be in your short term memory, but you might not have absorbed or understand it. So this should hopefully tell you uh, whether you are kind of correct in saying one, two, three, four or five based on your rating for uh, polygons and symmetries. Um, so I'll start to go through this. So his answer was five. Um, so will I give the whole answer away? I don't want to give the whole one. OK. So what it would be is I tend to do dotted lines for lines of symmetry. And of course, I'd use a ruler if I possibly could here. Um, so my lines of symmetry will be going through each um, corner, each vertex, and, each, and it will also go through the midpoint of the opposite um, side, so, along with the center. So it would be something like this. And of course, they should that should just be one neat point of the center, which they go through. If I had a ruler. So these are the lines of symmetry on this regular pentagon. Um, and as you'd expect, if it's a regular shape with a certain amount of sides, 
the number of uh, lines of symmetries is going to correspond with the number of sides. Uh, yeah, makes sense. Um, and then Omar then says, what if the pentagon is not regular? For a pentagon that's not regular, what's true about the number of lines of symmetry? OK, so have a think about this, maybe, maybe do some sketching because this is a bit trickier and maybe easier to draw than to just think off the top of your head. So maybe draw, try drawing an irregular pentagon. So that will just mean that not, ev uh, not all the interior angles are equal. So in this case, we kind of have to think about specific cases. So I'm going to do my best to draw. Um, so that's got one, two, three, four, five. Uh, so that, that's meant to be my completely irregular one, such that it should have no um, lines of symmetry. And then maybe if I tried that, We can see it is not perfectly regular, so we can see one going, sorry, that should go through the point, but one going through up there, and there is uh, none anywhere else. Um, so I've kind of drawn this that way on purpose, uh, but if we think about specific cases, there's no other way to make um, any more lines of symmetry in another pentagon we drew, so there's no way to make two, three, uh, or four, and then if it does five, it goes back to a regular pentagon. So maybe to convince yourself, have a go at that yourself. But to me, this was more of a thinking question than one where we could apply a formula. Or at least I can't think of any formula that would give me this answer. So just quickly have a think and welcome to challenge me and see if you can draw um, a pentagon as two, three, four, uh, two, three or four lines of symmetry, but fairly confident you can't. OK, so I'm going to carry on. Zero or one was the answer. <coughs> Excuse me. So now some angle facts. So um, there are a variety of facts that you need to be able to recall. So they help you in calculating missing angles. So what we have is we have specific uh, scenarios. So uh, an example of these is we have angles at a point. So here we have a specific point here. And then we have some lines. It could be it could be any number of lines. So generally, there's going to need to be there's all sorry all there's always going to be at least two lines that make up an angle um, by definition of how how we calculate an angle. But there could be more than two. For example, here there's four lines making this. And if we have two two um, lines, then we can create an angle. And then we can consider the exterior angle adding up to 360, or we could extend it. And just consider this, and we know that these two will sum to 180 by our angle rules. Um, alternatively, we could add another one here, um, and so we could use we could use some extended lines. Or if I ignore the extended lines, and now we have three lines here, we couldn't really say anything about this angle because that's not a straight line. So my point being here is these are just specific cases, but in general we can um manipulate lines we can extend lines or we can just consider a, the angles around lines and this is just a specific case where we can see the sum of the angles makes a full rotation of the circle so they add up to 360 degrees okay, we'll look at some more cases as well um so maybe very quickly um this is not like a question in itself but you could just maybe just solve for a this is just an example but uh Solving for A is really just doing 360 minus 105 
minus 95 minus 60, which is just a case of plugging in. So I won't get anyone to do that. <coughs> okay, and now angles on a straight line. <coughs> so as I talked about before, we have straight lines. Here we have two straight lines. So as we know, angles on any straight line will sum to 360 and uh, 180. Sorry, it's a really nice diagram because what it's showing is if we if we ignore this line just for the second. What we, what we can say is we can say here we have a straight line so angle B plus 30 degrees must equal 180. So I'll just kind of write them out like a system of equations. But uh, Yeah. And now what I can do. Uh, we might come across this a bit later, but it's a nice introduction now. We can ignore this line here. And now we have this straight line here. And what we can say from this straight line is that B plus C also lies on a straight line. So B plus C is equal to 180 degrees. Uh, I've, I've admitted the degrees because it's really clear we're working degrees, so it just save me a bit of time and energy. OK, so <clears throat> what can we say from this? We have B plus 30 is 180 and B plus C is 180. So what we can say is uh, this is two equations that are exactly the same form, except here we have 30 and here we have um, an unknown C. So what we can directly say is that C must be 30 for the equations to match as they have to. So what we can say is angle C here is also equal to this angle here. So these two angles are the same. And I'll, this will, I'll give you this formally in a rule just in a bit of time, but this diagram is a nice um, uh, visual to show, uh, to, sh to show this rule. Uh, now vertically opposite angles are equal. So that's that's essentially what I've just shown you. So C and 30 are equal and then B and this angle here, maybe I could call it D. B and D are equal. So vertically opposite. Um, I wouldn't be too phased. I wouldn't be too confused maybe by the word vertically because sometimes you would think um, where is a vertical and horizontal in this case? I, I at least have always kind of just considered that the name for it. And I've just looked at opposite angles um, when compared to like a straight line. So opposite angles or opposite angles, I wouldn't get too hung up on the vertically word. So now probably the most important concept in um, angle rules is going to be parallel lines. So parallel lines, um, you might know are indicated by um, arrows pointing in usually the same direction. But if we have arrows pointing in the same direction, um that will usually tell us that the um the lines are parallel so uh parallel lines are lines that are always the same distance apart and never intersect um and they're indicated by the arrowheads um a nice way to think about them is we always um i was always told to think about train tracks when i was in younger years so we know train tracks when you're going across a train, they're always going to be facing that same way and they're never going to meet. Otherwise, the train would crash or, or something would happen bad, something bad would happen. But the train tracks are always going to be parallel. So if, if you look at two lines, uh, you can't always tell unless they give you this arrow. You can't assume something's parallel. But if they do give if they do give these arrows to you, then straight away you can tell that they're parallel. And importantly, when a pair of parallel lines is intersected by another line, as we can see from this blue line, it's called an intersecting transversal. So I generally, I don't, uh, I don't think you come across the word intersecting transversal a lot in exams, at least. They just give you this line and expect you to know what to do with it rather than to name it. But I think it's helpful to just know it, uh, know the name at least. And it produces a pair of angles with unique features. So here we can see what it produces. It's produced one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight angles of interest. So here we have some angle rules now. So we're getting into angle rules, for example, corresponding angles. So corresponding angles are equal and the lines form the letter F. Um, and as we can see here, there's different uh, ways to write the F. So, for example, here the F is like that, which is backwards and inverted. Here we have it backwards. Here we have it forwards. And here we have it 
Um, oh, sorry, not that. Here we have it. The fourth way, I can't remember which I've said. <laughs> um, we have the four different ways and hopefully you can essentially see the way we've got to this um, is, uh, sorry, the way we can get from one to the other is saying that angles on a straight line equal 180. So we have this one here. So these two, remember, if we ignore the angles that have been drawn in, this is essentially just the same diagram four times. And we can say this angle here plus this angle here must equal 180 degrees by um, by the straight line rule. Or I'll call it the straight line rule from now on. So if this one is equal to this one, and these two must sum to 180, and these two must sum to 180, what we can say directly from this is that these two are 180, then we could do the same thing here between this one here and, and this one and this angle here, which is just this. So we can keep going around straight lines and we can keep saying if these two are the same and these two equal 180, then the next two must be the same. Essentially what we've done is once we've said uh, that this is definitely true, this one is equal to this one, um, which we might prove or I might or I might just be telling you, I can't quite remember, but yeah, once you know this, you know any of these sets will be the same. So we often call them F angles uh, informally, but when you're writing in an exam, you need to call them corresponding angles. So you could maybe just remember corresponding angles as F angles in your head. And then whenever you see an F, that just corresponds to corresponding angles. And then you write that down formally to get marks in an exam. Okay. Now alternate angles. So alternate angles are equal again. And we say the lines form a letter Z. So this is very similar in uh, form to before, whereas we have they're equal, they, they look like a letter just so we can remember them. We need to remember the name corresponding to this, uh, this lettering Z and the Z shape may be normal or facing the wrong way. Uh, so we can have this here or we could have this here. And again, because angles on a straight line are 180, we can get from here to here easily. Um, and I, I'm, I, we're just going to tell you this is the case. I don't think we're going to prove it or at least not now. <clears throat> OK. And vertically opposite angles. So we kind of came across that before. Uh, vertically opposite angles occur in parallel lines too. And as we said from the rule, vertically opposite angles equal. So of course they're equal here. So here we have some specific cases. Um, again, I don't want to keep going on about it, but to get from here to here, We've just used the 180 degree rule and to get from here to here we have two and to get from here to here we could use some specific rules but I, I don't need to go into them you just need to be confident on using the angles not how to get uh, from one angle rule to the other so I'll let you just have um, a look at this and make sure you're confident <clears throat> and I think we go into some questions Okay, now we have an exam question. Um, so don't worry if this seems a bit daunting. Um, I'm happy to go back. Um, I probably will in fact go back uh, just so you have all the angle rules um, in front of you. Hopefully you've been making some notes throughout, but I'll quickly flick back to the three angles, just make maybe a minute into this question in case anyone's forgotten them. So I'll read the question out too. So um, A, B, uh, C, D and E are for straight lines. Uh, we assume that AB and CD are parallel, so maybe what I could do is I could draw some arrowheads in. <clears throat> what answer should she get for the size of angle Y? So we have an unknown X that occurs twice, we have an unknown Y and an unknown uh, W. Okay, so there's a few scenario, uh, a few different angle scenarios that will use angle rules here. So we could break down this question, but I'll let you just have a think about it because this is not a work question, so I'm going to give you time to hopefully solve it.
just a quick reminder, we have vertically opposite angles. Uh, we have Z angles. And we have F angles. And I believe that's all we should need to solve this. Along with the angle rules, for example, uh, angles on a straight line equal 180 degrees, which hopefully you know off the top of your head by now. Uh, and also, as it's a four marker, what they're going to want is I think they're going to want some justification. So what I mean by that is justification is saying um, something is equal to something else because of corresponding angles or because of alternate angles or for whatever reason. But just give a reason for why you've said something equals something or a reason for your calculation if it's not just basic mass or addition or subtraction, if you've used a rule essentially. So what I'm going to do, uh, let's see how we're doing timing wise. That's OK. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to work through it. So what can we use first? So what I tend to do is um, quite often in these questions, there's stuff that you can work out. Uh, there's sorry, there's angles that you can work out that are absolutely correct, but we don't actually need. So instead of just um, having a look and thinking, oh, I spot Z angle, or I spot who I spot an F angle. I'm going to try and start from the answer that I need and work backwards to kind of break the question down in chunks. So uh, we have Y here. So, so the point is to find Y. So obviously, we don't know Y off the top of our head, uh, so, or we can't directly calculate it because that's the question. So what next do we need to work out or what can we work out? So to correspond to Y, we could either work out this angle here, and use corresponding angles, or we could work out this angle here and use um, angles on a straight line. So this hasn't been labeled, so that leads me to believe we should uh, use this angle here. OK, so next we need to work out 3x minus, uh, minus 20 degrees. So essentially we need to solve for x so far. So how can we solve for x here? So what I would say, is uh, so now how can we get this? So what rules can I think of? So I could say we could use alternate angles to say that's equal to W, but all we've done there is we've introduced another unknown. So that doesn't seem helpful. Uh, we might go down that way if there's nothing better, but I'd maybe avoid going down that way if we can. So what else can we say? We can use F angles. So we could use this F here. Uh, that's an upside down and inverted F, I think. And we could say 3x minus 20 degrees is equal to 2x plus 10 degrees. So 3x minus 20 is equal to 2x plus 10. So what should that imply? So we can solve for x. So minus 2x from both sides and add 20 to both sides. So that's just getting rid of any x terms on the right and getting rid of any numerical terms on the left. And that should simplify to 1x is equal to 30. So now all we need to do is we now have enough information to solve for this, which means we have enough information to solve for this. So we're going to plug it in and say that is that's an equal to sign. It's just slanted. Uh, that is equal to uh, 70 degrees. And y is then equal to 180 minus 70 degrees. Uh, 180 minus 70, which is 110 degrees. And now just a quick check. Um, it hasn't told, it's told us it's not drawn accurately, but maybe we could just briefly consider, does it seem incredibly wrong or does it seem possibly right? So they've said not drawn accurately. So if it's in front of you, you can't just take a protractor out. But if we measured this, uh, sorry, if, if we looked at this, we can see it looks like it's going to be bigger than 90 degrees. So it looks like it's going to be obtuse. Uh, but we, we can't necessarily go off that. But it seems like it could be right at least. So 110 is my answer. Hopefully you've got something similar and they've also got 110 uh, and they have done exactly this, or almost exactly the same method. 
Uh, as I said, there's probably a couple of ways to do this. Maybe you could use you could use vertically opposite angles and solve. Uh, or instead of calculating saying this is equal to this, you can say this is equal to this uh, through z angles, and this is equal to this through vertically opposite. But that's essentially an extra step that we don't need. Okay, so I'm going to move on. So in fact, A, B, and C are not parallel. So we now can't assume it's parallel. We're told it's not in fact. An angle W 60 degrees. What effect does this have on the size of angle Y? So sorry, I'm just going to really quickly <coughs> copy that uh, picture back in just so you have it for you. Uh, So there we go. Um, so what effect does uh, this have on the size of angle Y if A, B and C, if A, B and C D are not parallel and angle W is 60 degrees? Um, and just recall before we calculated X is equal to 30 um, if parallel. And if parallel means if A and B, if A, B and C, D are parallel. So X is now probably not 30 unless it's just a coincidence. OK, so maybe let's um, have a consider at uh, basically what this means. Now they've told us it's not parallel. What's the difference between the last question and this question? So before, the fact that they're parallel meant that we could use corresponding angles to say uh, 2x plus 10 is equal to 3x minus 20. We could only use that rule if A, B and C, D are parallel, which they're now not. So we can't use that rule, which we've just used. Okay, so what, what can we use? We can use vertically opposite angles regardless of, uh, because vertically opposite angles only consider F, E and A, B. So, a, so the, uh, the value, of, sorry, not the value, the gradient of C, D, it's slant, whether it's parallel or not is, is irrelevant. So what we can say now for sure is that W is equal to 2X plus 10. And we'll see that might be helpful. So now what we can say before you could maybe say w is equal to 3x minus 20 in this case we can't use that again for the same reasons because it's not parallel so what, what so now they've given us w which is helpful so now we can solve for x so that implies x is equal to um 25 so i i'd encourage you to obviously write down in between steps but in the interest of time i'm just gonna kind of slightly do it in my head OK, so now X is 25. So what's that saying? So before, so Y is always 180. 180 minus this, so minus 3X and then minus minus 20, which is plus 20. So I'm just going to add 20 on that and make it 200. So before X was 30 and now X was 25. So if we're minusing something that has got smaller, y is going to be bigger so you, you can do uh you can actually plug it in to check yourself but hopefully clearly if you're minusing something that's now a smaller number the overall value should be bigger so let's see if that's correct so they said y is bigger and you can even say you can sh if you were going to show your working you would plug it in and say y is now 125 which is 15 bigger so yes um as they've given you these lines to show your working i, I would encourage you to plug it in Okay, so hopefully that's clear. I'll just check if there's any questions so far.
Okay, um, no questions so far. So hopefully everyone's finding it um, manageable, or at least understanding things. Um, okay, so we're going to carry on.